Doesn't have to upload or anything? All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our Wednesday night service. And Wednesday night is just basically a Bible study right now. We were doing a, a prayer meeting for a long time, but the Lord told me to go over to do a Bible study, so that's what we're going to do. But I got surprised because we were doing a series, and I sat down with my Bible uh, the other day, and I was kind of tired because I'd just done this woman ministry four, four, four hour thing. And I dropped my Bible on my lap and it flipped open to Jeremiah chapter 51. And the Lord said to me, I looked down at it, I don't know much about Jeremiah chapter 51. The Lord said to me, that's Jeremiah chapter 51 has everything in it that the church is going through right now in the world. It's a very long chapter. So I want you to turn to Matthew 24 and Jeremiah chapter 51, and we'll start tonight. And we're going to do this. This is interrupting our series. We'll get back to it. But this will probably be about three or four sessions, knowing me maybe more, because, well, there you go. If I get through this tonight, all this tonight, it'll be amazing. And I started listening to other people this week. People sent me stuff to listen to and stuff, and lo and behold, they're saying the same thing. It was amazing. So God is really going to give us some wisdom here about how and what and why, okay, what's going on. So in Matthew chapter 24, if you look down here, Jesus is talking about the end times, the times that we're living in, and he made a statement in verse 7. He said, for nation shall rise against nation. And kingdom against kingdom. The first part of that verse that is all I want you to look at. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. What we're seeing basically right now is the rise of the kingdom of God in the earth. The kingdom of darkness had things under control. I mean, it had it sewed up, man. And for many, many years, nobody really did much about it. We all sat around and lived in a world that really was not even real. And we're finding out how unreal it really was. And, and all these conspiracies now are becoming non-conspiracies. It's shocking. And so what's happening is our prayers are prevailing. What's happening is exposure is taking place. What's happening is, is God is preparing the hearts of the people of the United States and around the world to receive him. Uh, what's happening is, is people are, beginning, are going to begin to find their place in life, in the body of Christ, as well as outside, in the, even in the secular world. And people are going to, we're going to be, it's going to be fun because we are going to be so strong. Yeah, right. The real church, we're going to be like a battle axe. And it's going to cause a lot of issues. Hallelujah. And so if people have a tendency to be religious, they're going to get dealt with. They're going to have to make a, they're going to have to make a decision whether which way they're going to go, the dark side or the light side. But kingdom is going to clash against kingdom. That's what's happening right now. So in Jeremiah chapter 51, let's go through this. This talks about this system called, everybody say it, Babylon. Babylon. Babylon is not a city, Illuminati system, or a deep state. You can use any of those terms. The same system, the system where the elite people in this world have, that have all the money and power and resources are trying to bring about the destruction of Christianity, bring about the last and end times, bring in the Antichrist that is an Antichrist that they, they think will will rule the world, become one world, and they really think that this is their calling in life and that, they're, that uh, this is what they're supposed to do and that the Bible is wrong in the sense that the God doesn't win, Lucifer does. And they're, sold out, they're sold out to that. So God has chosen. Now listen, why, I don't know. How come this is happening, I can't tell you. All I can tell you is he has chosen us and our generation in the church right now to deal with Babylon. Amen. To dismantle it. To bring it out into the open. To 
run it back underground for however long it takes until he allows it to come back and the church gets raptured and all that. Yeah. Isn't that exciting? Yeah. So in Jeremiah chapter 51, it starts off, and I'm, I'm reading out of the good old King James Version. You say, why? Well, because it's the king. Okay, never mind. Verse 1, thus saith the Lord, behold, I will raise up against Babylon. I will rise up. Everybody say, he's going to rise up. I say, you know, I want you to keep that as a focal point on this. It's not us. He's doing it, but he's going to do it through his church. Yeah. Now, how many of you have ever seen a lion roar? Yeah. Have you ever heard one of those? I remember we were at a, um, a zoo. I can't remember who we were with. Milwaukee, maybe. Maybe uh, I, I used to go to zoos everywhere I went. I mean, I still like zoos. And, um, man, I heard one of those one time close. It's scary. I tell you what, it'll paralyze you. It's like everything vibrates and so, uh, you know. It's amazing. Well, God is like the lion of the tribe of Judah. And when he roars, it affects everything. And he's roaring. And he says, behold, I'm going to rise up against Babylon and against them, listen, that dwell in the midst of them, or the people involved in all this, that rise up against me, and I'm going to send a destroying wind. Everybody say, destroying wind. Now, this is interesting. Now, of course, Babylon represents the evil demonic structure. We saw another school shooting. I, th I believe that that is probably done on purpose. Yeah. Unfortunately, we got people and kids that have split personalities now that they can program to do stuff like that, and we're seeing it. I believe that this is part of um, trying to get, you know, trying to get uh, people's minds on uh, that instead of all this exposure that's going on. How many know all this good stuff's going on? Like Hillary Clinton, they're going to fry her hide. I mean, seriously, they could, she could end up getting her hide fried. She should. It's time for justice to come. Jeremiah chapter 51, since you're tardy. <laughs> I never was a Catholic, but I heard it's rough in those Catholic schools. You ever get your hand slapped with a, with a ruler? I've heard about that. Anyway, so... Of course, Babylon represents the evil demonic structure that includes the Illuminati, the deep state, the communist system, oh, the socialist system, all of that stuff. That's all part of their plan. In his sovereign plan, for whatever reason, I don't know, understand it, God's still sovereign, God still knows all things, and he has decided right at this minute decided to have our, the church that we're living in right now yeah. on, on earth rise up in society and deal with that thing. Wow. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Exciting times. The Lord clearly spoke to me saying, Jeremiah 51, is a, and it's a very long chapter, but it, it will, it, when we read it, we'll understand and give us what we need to know about the clash of the kingdoms. I had no idea about this. I started reading this and I go, wow, my God, look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. Just right down the middle. Some of it's really interesting. So we have the clash of the kingdom of God against the kingdom of Babylon. Right now, we are locking horns like never before with demonic powers. Woo, glory. Now he says in, in Jeremiah 51 verses 1 and 2 that the, there's a wind that he's sending that separates the wheat from the chaff. I actually uh, read it in several different translations. And what he's saying there is that there are people in the system of Babylon, as evil as that system is, that need to be brought out into the kingdom of God. So we need to pray for them because many of them are going to make a change. In fact, you're going to see people come out and sing like a bird. You're seeing them turn on one another. They're, they're testifying against one another. And it's wild to watch because once it starts happening, man, everybody, nobody wants to go to jail. So you got to sing before somebody else sings so you can make sure you sing, you know. And uh, <laughs> so it's going to be fun. But anyway, this wind, God is going to send. 
It's interesting, though, because when you look this up, uh, God will separate some people out of the Babylon system. When that, when that wind comes and they will repent, others, that wind will bring judgment. Okay? Jeremiah 51, since Naomi's tardy. Bad Naomi. It's good to see Naomi, actually. I miss her. Boy, Naomi, you're missing out on so much, you know. I'm sorry to tell you. But I heard you guys are busy. Real busy? Yeah, okay. Well, that's better than not being busy. Everybody say this with me out loud. God is raising up his army. I tell you what, if you don't want to be in the army of God, you want to be a wimp, you're going to miss out. This is where to be. Frontline unit, army of God, special forces unit. Man, we got people in this room that are just, the devil just going to, he don't like you and he never has, but now the anointing that's coming on us with this wind, this wind, this anointing that's coming on us is going to be bold and strong and we're going to be fearless. Absolutely fierce, terrorizing. Satan and his kingdom. Yeah. I like that, don't you? Terrorize. Yeah. We've been, terror been trying to terrorize us. We're going to terrorize right back now. Yeah. That's right. So let's go on and read some more. Verse 2, and I and, and will send into Babylon fanners that shall fan her and shall empty her land. For in the day of trouble they shall be uh, around, uh, against her round about. So God's going to raise up people that blow that wind, that, that fan that wind. That wind of judgment, that wind of the, of the Holy Ghost is going to be fanned. He's going to bring people to the evangelists like you've never seen people that get up and say stuff and do stuff. Yeah, even people that, you know, Facebook and people can't take people like that. They, I've been, I keep getting torched by Facebook because I said, you know, one of you said a word that I won't use because I don't want to get, you know, put off there for 30 days again. Not that I'm intimidated, but we said something that was so, so stupid. Because yeah. right. yeah. a robot, <laughs> robot, you know, saw, heard it. <laughs> so, go, let's read on. Verse 3, against him that bendeth, let the archer bend his bow. And against him that lifteth himself up in his uh, grandeur, Right? And spare ye not her young men, destroy ye utterly all the host. God is going to deal with these people, and he is going to send his arrows, and he is going to use you, and he's going to use me, and we're going to have prayers on our lips, and we're going to have faith in our heart, and we're going to get up when we pray. Things are going to move, honey. We're going to move heaven and earth every time we pray. Verse 4, thus the, the slain shall fall in the land of the Chaldeans, and they that are thrust through in her streets. For Israel has not been forsaken, nor Judah of his God, of the Lord of hosts. Though their land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel, flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. Amen. This is the time we're living in, the time of God's vengeance. He will, he will render under her a recompense. Hallelujah. It's been a while, long time. We've been, you know, kind of getting beat up and beat on and, and not heard and push, pushed on and pushed around and nobody cared and playing church. But all of a sudden now God is saying, hey, I'm going to use my church and I'm going to raise this church up and they're going to have an understanding that now is the time of the vengeance of God. Now it's going to be his vengeance, but we will bring about a lot of it in the earth. Amazing. So these fiery arrows and this prayer and this confession of the word and this mountain moving faith that we've developed over the years and the, these people that, are, that have listened to the Lord and been taught right and, and, come, and, and people that are in churches like, I look around tonight, you know, for those that are looking in, I've got people here 45 minutes, an hour, an hour and a half away. They come, they drive here all the time. Why? Because the church alive is worth a drive. And God is raising up people that are not going to sit there and just play your basic Christian knucklehead church. No more. It ain't happening. It's so awesome to be out of that. 
Some of those people will come out of Babylon. You're going to see a lot of church, uh, Illuminati people. You're going to see a lot of satanic people. You're going to see a lot of politicians. You're going to see a lot of them come out, witchcraft and, and uh, lesbianism and thisism and thatism and transvestidoodles and everything else. I'm not going to get in trouble for that. Sorry. I don't think doodle is on there. I don't think. The, the robot went, what's that, what's that? <laughs> don't know a doodle, don't know what a doodle. I'll just change words, how's that? You'll know what I mean. All right, so they'll get set free. But it's also the time of vengeance. So God, for, for, I want to give people out there that are maybe mocking. You know, come, they come on st things like mine and they mock people like me. You need to repent. You need to get right right now. You need to do it as soon as you possibly can, and you need to do it no matter what it is. I'd rather have somebody come up to me and fry me on a, a, a pole in a, in a witchcraft ceremony than go to hell. Take a stand for the Lord. He will take vengeance now against everything that has been done to God's people and the Jewish nation. There's two entities in this earth that you do not right now want to mess with. The Jews and the Christians. I'm serious right now. Starting right. You do not want to just be a pillar or a prick in the side. Did that do it? Prick in the side. I explained it. It's in the Bible. There's a lot of cuss words in the Bible. People think This will also include cooperation, and strong moving of God's angelic activity. We're going to learn how to be precise in, you know, sending them forth and all of that kind of thing so they get involved in this. Man, I tell you, this is going to be the greatest thing because he is the Lord of hosts. You know what that means? Lord of hosts, Lord Sabaho, Lord of hosts, mighty in battle. You will see a release of great healing to our nation, to the church, and the people in the church. People who have had their health robbed are going to come into health. Just like the days of old when the Azusa Street and the great healing revivals. It's going to be awesome. Some that have been bound so long in slavery, religion, and other things, sitting in churches, are going to receive a deliverance that are going to be set free. Yes. Thousands and thousands of them are going to have that happen to them. And they're going to come into freedom and be part of this great army as it's happening right now. Are you ready for that? Yes. Physical healings. Amazing miracles like the Church of Acts. A restoration of answered prayers that have went, seem like your prayers have went for years without being answered. God is going to restore and begin to answer those prayers. Be, begin to answer our faith projects. Begin to answer and remove the hindrances. Amen. So that when you pray, your prayers are answered much quicker. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's going to heal marriages. You're going to start seeing marriages that look like they were, it's it for that marriage, be restored and families restored. Amen. Hallelujah. It's going to be a time of great restoration. Prosperity and jubilee will flow forth for God's people. I have a sense, and I don't understand it, but I've been told, and I'm sticking with it, that there's a possibility in this, next, whatever's happening here politically, once it comes full circle, that they're just going to forgive all our debts. Talk about, talking about um, fueling the economy. Can you imagine if all your debts were canceled? You'd have all this money come into the kingdom, what we could do? Oh, my God. 
But you see, that would be, that's really God, God's way. He did it every seven years. I don't understand all that. I'm not you know, one of these guys who understands everything about the way finances work and everything. All I know is I believe God is going to do some, some mighty, wonderful, awesome things. And it doesn't make any difference what your standing is in life. Even if you're a single mom, I don't care what it is. I don't care if you're behind, I think you're behind the eight ball, nine ball, the 10 ball and everything else. God is going to give great grace and show himself strong because of people's faith. Hallelujah. Amen. God is also right now positioning and promoting God's people into the places he wants them to be. The next four or five years, you're going to see people rise up and walk into these places and even politics. Now listen to this. You up to this point to go into politics had to be about halfway crazy. Because the second you get in there, there's such a spirit that draws on you. Next thing you know, you're one of them. But no more. God is going to give some of these people an anointing to go in there and just, well, I'll just be honest with you. They're going to be like a bunch of Trumps. I, they don't like that word either, but, you know, I was, I, I was talking about cards, cards. <sighs> we are going to go into the world, not take the world completely over. We're not going to dominate. It's not that I don't preach dominion theology or I don't preach kingdom now theology, but I do preach and occupy, get in there, salt and light, and harass the living fire out of everything that ain't Christian. Come on, everybody. That's what I preach. That's my theology, and I'm sticking with it. We will be like Jeremiah. Go to Jeremiah chapter 1. This is what we're going to be like. Hold your place. We'll come right back there. But little Jeremiah, he was something else, man. This kid, he's a kid. God sends him out here to a bunch of brutal people. <laughs> you know, these prophets didn't end well. But they, they were not afraid to stand up and prophesy and say what needed to be said. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 9. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. I tell you what, that's going to happen to a lot of us. You're going to see people that cuss like sailors overnight, quit cussing. It happened to me. It happened to me. I mean, I had the worst cussing problem, and it, far more than anybody in this room. I could cuss the wallpaper off a wall. You turn blue and red and everything else being around me. When I got saved, it left me. Just left me. I tried to cuss and go, you know. And I didn't have to witness it to anybody because they all saw it. What's wrong? What happened to you, man? His hand, and he touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out. We're going to root some stuff out, man. And to pull down, we're going to pull down some stuff. And to destroy, we're going to destroy some things. And to throw down, we're going to throw down some things. And we're going to build some things. We're going to plant some things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we are going to be relevant in everything going on in the earth. And we're not going to back down. And we're going to walk right into places like the United Nations and say, No more. You're a witch. You're a warlock. You're a Illuminati. We're done with you. I'm serious. We're going to have the gifts of the Spirit in operation. They'll be afraid if we come into a room. They're going to be afraid when somebody comes into the media room who, who has these gifts working. Hey, that's a lie. That's a ball-headed lie. This is what really happened. And guess what? You hanging around with that girl again, Maureen, what's your wife think about that? Maureen, I don't know where I came up with that. If you're Maureen, it's, I'm just, it's an example. This is what's happening right now. This, this right here in Jeremiah, this little, little piece of scripture here, is exactly what's happening in the world. We are rooting this stuff out. I mean, the, 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 the far left crazies 
are going nuts. They don't know what to do. What are you going to do? Everything's coming down on them. Everything they planned is not working. It's not working. And it won't work. And somebody says, oh, no, it's the tribulation. No, it's not the tribulation. It's the blow them out generation. It's the come after them and hunt them down and expose them and change some things generation. That's what it is. Somebody needs to preach this because this is the truth. I can't stand that. Oh, we're all going to go in the tribulation right now. And oh, the Antichrist and the goat of Mendes is appearing. And, you know, I'm going, no, no, not yet. Not yet. We got a lot of work to do. We want to reap. I mean, we got people in this room, right? We got Sabella and Lydia who haven't even had a chance to do much yet. And they're going to be the worst of the whole bunch. They're going to be a nightmare for every devil that appears on the scene. Let's go back to Jeremiah chapter 51 since I'm preaching myself happy now. I told you you enjoy coming tonight. I mean, they're going to walk into a room. I mean, little kids, you know, little teenagers walk into a room, look at you in the eye and say, you know what? That spirit, that evil spirit's got a hold of you. It causes you to sit down and watch that pornography show with that Margaret lady every night. Uh, you, you want me to cast that out? You accept Jesus and I'll cast it out. If not, you're going you're to die and go to hell. You keep doing that. You, under, you understand me? That'll, that'll get you thinking. You have that happen to you. Yeah. Jeremiah 51, look at verse 7. Let's see, let's go back up here. Okay, verse 7. Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken, and the nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore, the nations have went completely insane. Yeah. There you go. The nations have went mad. And God just said, go ahead, because I'm going to expose you to everybody now. And they fell right into his little trap. And the Lord's up there, the Bible says, he sits up there and he laughs at these idiots. He hears them down there making their plans and he laughs. Because he's just going to do everything, take them out left and right, expose them. We're going to hear tapes. We're going to hear people recording tapes of people making plans and sacrifices and everything else. Uh, little children is all going to come out right into the media and right into the midst of all of us. And we're going to see it over and over and over again to the point to where there's no way they cannot report it. And if you're going to either get on our side or you're going to be in big trouble. And everybody's going to know it. Not everybody's going to become a Christian, but a lot of people are going to become patriots. Amen. The nations have gone mad. Have you noticed that? Yes. There's, so, there's, such, there's, there's so much lunacy going on. Everywhere you look. You go into a store, you have to look around. Go into Walmart. Let's take a look at Walmart. Sit down there for, for about half a day, drink, have a cup of coffee there at the subway, and just watch what happens. Just watch them come in the door. Watch them click in the door. You will see things that nobody should ever see. They're mad. When, when little children and their parents go to the mall and wear short, short shorts, so that their buns hang out the side of their trousers. And mom does it, and, then, and babies do it, and then, you know, and they walk around that way. That's madness. When would, would you ever think that a mother would allow that with her children? But they think they're cool. Aren't they cool? Look at, look at, my, little, huh? look at my little bun-waving girl. You know, that's, they're mad. They're crazy. No common sense anymore. <laughs> We were down there the other day. I said, I don't like going to the mall no more. I don't want to see these girls with, with holding hands, skipping the loo, you know, or the boys. I don't want to see any guys with beards kissing. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Some things should just not be. Oh. 
I know this is tough to hear, but it's the truth. I mean, they're, they're completely mad. You got little kids on TikTok, their parents film them cussing up a storm because they think it's just hilarious and funny and they get a million views and everybody goes, isn't that so cute? Using the F word, banging out the B word. Man, I'm glad, I'm glad my parents are gone. I'm glad it's a, lot of my, a lot of the people in my generation are gone because this is just too, too hard to bear. The world's gone mad. But this is the perfect time for the church to rise and to help these people receive back their sanity. We will literally help people out of insanity. Right here in this room, many people will be brought from insanity to sanity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Wonderful. The nations have gone mad as they yield to the Babylonian doctrines, thoughts, and demonic possession is taking place. And so Babylon is suddenly going to be destroyed. Look at Jeremiah 51 verse 8. Babylon is suddenly fallen. Everybody say suddenly. suddenly. And this is what's happening right before our eyes. All of a sudden, three or four or five years ago, you would have never heard a message like this. But we didn't understand what's going on. All I heard was Babylon's taking over the world. You know, all I heard is the Antichrist's coming. All I heard is this, you know. We might have, you know, the aliens from the, you know, planet Nebula land over here. And <coughs> all you heard was all that. But now we're hearing, we don't care if the, the aliens from planet Nebula come. We'll just cast them out in front of everybody. They can go back to Nebula, where they came, or whatever. So we weren't hearing any of these. It was, a, it, was a, it was a message. The message was, what can we get? What can we get? What can we receive? You know, how can we get through this thing? Now the message needs to be not only how can we get through this thing, how can we help other people get through this thing? How can we go out into our communities and say, devil, you're not going to take my street. I'm going to pray my street straight. Every person on my street is coming to our church. Or somewhere. They're going somewhere. Amen? Amen. Very, very interesting. Okay, let's look down here. Verse 8. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her? Take balm for her pain, if she may be healed. <clears throat> in other words, we have to intercede for a lot of these people because they're caught up in this Babylonian world. I mean, look at some of them. I mean, this Elon Musk. I mean, a few years ago, that guy was nuts. And all of a sudden, he came into his right mind all of a sudden. And if it's true, he comes from one of those families. But all of a sudden, he's seeing things. What's happening? God is beginning to remove that. Now, he can come to my church anytime he wants. Just come one time and tithe. That's all I need. <laughs> I'm serious. We're going to have people like that come into the church and say, well, what is my tithe? I don't, I, can't, I don't know. It adds up so fast. Well, here, let's do a two billion. Uh, so, here, here we see this, verse 9, we, we, would ha uh, we would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. For, for, forsake her and let us go, go everyone into his own country, for her judgment reaches into heaven and is lifted up even to the skies. This has come up, the judgment has come up before heaven into the skies, the judgment rooms of God. This has been decided now. A lot of people have already been judged up there. A lot of these people, they can't do anything to repent. Their time is already at hand. They, they push God away so many times, and now it's time for them to reap what's going to happen. Who that is, that's not my business. That's his business. But I'm telling you right now, it's scary. If you're on the other side of this, you don't want to be on the other side of God when he starts this. For the Lord hath brought forth our righteousness came and let us decree in Zion. Zion, whenever you see that in the Old Testament, is pointing to the church on the wor work of the Lord our God. <clears throat> now here's the fun. These, this gets fun now. You ready for this? Verse 11. 
Make bright the arrows. Gather the shields. The Lord has raised up the spirit of the king of Midas. For his advice is against Babylon to destroy it because it is the vengeance of the Lord and the vengeance of his temple. Now, now, who is that? Who is that? Do you know who that is? Medus or Medus? Cyrus. It was Cyrus when he was still a warrior, still a, a, a champion fighter. And we know that prophets prophesied way before Trump even came on the scene that he was the Cyrus. And what's happened? The spirit of Cyrus came on him, this anointing. And now it's coming on the church. What we had to figure out is this. We can't just have let, it, let him do the work. It's got to be us. No politician. We can't put our trust in any of these guys. Now, lucky, I, I, he's a good man and everything, you know. But people, don't, you know, a lot of Christians still I hate him. He cussed. Well, what an idiot. I've heard a lot of people say a lot worse things than Trump said. Everybody I know, some of my buddies said, oh, he's just, he's just so vulgar. I said, don't you remember what we used to be like? Every one of you guys are more vulgar than he ever was. I sat there and listened to you talk. We used to make all kinds of vulgar things, you know. Well, he's not a nice man. I don't care if he's not a nice man. What I want is a leader that pounds away on evil and says, we're not going to let these people take America over. We want to make America great again. I'm talking about a card, of course. I'm talking about the King of Mendes. The King of Mendes, that is Cyrus. I looked it up. He was the one who brought Babylon the city down. And that anointing is coming on us. We got a, a, a Mendes bring the Babylon anointing down on us. Anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Strong. Bold. Breaks things. <laughs> it's because it is the vengeance of the Lord. The vengeance of his temple. It's time for vengeance. It's time for him to get everything back. It's time for him to make things right. It's time for him to get our money back that was stolen from us all those years with taxes. It's time for the vengeance of God to come and do the vengeance for his people. Verse 12, set up the standard upon the walls of Babylon. Oh, this is great. Make the watch strong, set up the watchmen, prepare the ambushments. For the Lord has both devised and done that which he spake against the inhabitants of Babylon. He says, we are to get up on the very walls of Babylon and we are, we are going to do ambushes. What does that mean? That means we're going to get up there in the realm of the spirit. We're going to go up to these places and we're going to just all of a sudden, boom, be there. Go in, boom, like special forces units. They don't see it coming. You know, these terrorist people, they can be sitting there and thinking they're just fine. They're eating their whatever it is they eat, the hummus, you know, for dinner. And I think they're just great. And all of a sudden, here comes these guys in the door. These guys come in the door, and you don't want the, you don't want the Green Berets or the, or the, or the SEALs or the, or, the, or the Rangers coming in your door because they got every kind of weapon known to mankind, and they do not miss. And if they don't use a weapon, they'll use a knife. They'll cut your head right off. And in a matter of just a few minutes, they have wiped the whole thing out, and they're out the door in a helicopter, and nobody even knows they were there. And this is exactly what it's going to be like. We're going to go in there and we're going to dismantle principalities and powers and they're not even going to see us coming. God's going to protect us. He's going to block us out so they, they, they cannot see in this realm of the spirit. All of a sudden we're just going to appear. We're going to appear in that occultic meeting. We're going to appear over there when they're doing witchcraft. All of a sudden we're going to, here we are. Yeah. We bind you. Yeah. Surprise, surprise. We're stopping your, your, yeah. your, your deal here. You're not going to do that. Do you understand me? Amen. 
It's going to happen everywhere all the time. It's going to be so frustrating for the devil. He's not even going to be one to plan anything. So every time I make a plan, somebody messes my plan up. It's going to be like the prophets of old. Some of these guys, you know, all of a sudden God would take them into the bedchamber of somebody. Can you imagine that? You walk up to somebody and go, guess what I saw the other day? (laughs) Now, how many know I'm not saying God's vulgar, but what I am saying is, you know, he has a way of doing things. Let's look at verse 13. O thou that dwelleth upon the many waters, abundant in treasures, thine end is come, and the measure of thy covetous. That's the Illuminati. That is the banking system that has taken all of the money and put it into these banks and this system and has got it all built up. And God is going to come in there and say, guess what? You got caught. That money, those trillions of dollars you stole from people, that's going to flow back to them. Now, there's going to be a wealth, wealth transfer. We've got to use our faith for it. But I believe this. I believe it's going to be absolutely amazing. We begin to see what happens. Let's just think about one guy. I'm going to use Elon Musk again because I didn't even know who he was until just a while ago. I heard about him a few times, but, you know. But I am very, very interested in him. One man, think about what Donald Trump did. One man has enough money to affect millions and millions of people. One man like Elon Musk, he could, who knows what he can do. With it. The Lord could speak to him. Give a million dollars to that ministry. Give a billion dollars to that ministry. And that, that Faith of Life Fellowship down there, give them three billion because they'll, they'll get it done. Get her done. And do it every, every three months. There you go. Ah, get her done. So we got to be ready, That's right. yeah. positioned, Amen. set up, standing on the walls, prepared, trained. This is why we need to get to church. Amen. We need to be in church every time we possibly can, and we need to be trained, and we need to stop just playing church. And we need to learn how to worship, and we need to learn how to pray, and we need to learn how to be the church, and we need to learn how to witness, and we need to, we need to learn not to be afraid yeah. That's right. to see one of our friends who's hurting and say, look, Normally I wouldn't have said this, but this is a new day. You need to get right with God and get in church because if you don't, you're liable to die. Do you understand me? You dummy. I'm serious. You need to hear some things. They need to hear some things. They need to be scolded sometimes. I remember uh, Norval Hayes, who we all love. I love Norval. I miss Norval. He went into this, uh, he used to go to these... uh, well, I did it too. I went to prisons. You ever, if you've never preached in a prison, you ain't lived yet, you know, really. How many have been in a prison and preached? Yeah, I love that stuff. I went in there, you know. Norval goes in there, and, and these guys are all sitting around, you know, they're all, you know, tattooed, and big old muscle, and, you know, nasty looking guys. And they're, you know, and he's, he gets getting up. He's kind of nervous because he's never done it before. And, you know, they're kind of giggling and laughing at him and stuff. And finally he got tired of it and he goes, what are you laughing at? You're the idiots that are in here, not me. (laughs) They shut them all up. I'm not the one that's in here. You are, you dummies. They started listening to him. They showed some, he told you, you put them down where it came down to their level. That's what you got to do. One victory after another is happening right before our eyes. How long is the body of Christ going to be in fear when we see victory after victory after victory after victory after another victory? Every day on the news even, we're seeing it now. Even in secular news, we're seeing victory after victory. We're seeing defeat after defeat of the enemy. We're seeing exposure after exposure. We're seeing victories in the church. We're seeing victories in politics. We're seeing victories in schools, the school system. We're seeing victories in the media. We're seeing victories in the courts. 
Victories in business, victories in economics. When victory after victory after victory is happening, why are we sitting around saying, oh, I'm so fearful because they're going to do another COVID. We're going to push COVID and everything with it back in Jesus' name. We should have done that the first time, but we're, they caught us off guard. And then all the Christians got a little really scared, you know. Didn't even want to go to church anymore. Some of them still don't. Oh, come on, man. As Joe would say, come on, man. These ambushments, these pronouncements that we will be doing will literally penetrate long-held and deeply held strongholds and we will quickly see results. Thirteen. O oh, thou that dwellest upon the many waters, that is the Illuminati. Verse 14, the Lord of hosts, the God of angel armies, has sworn by himself, saying, did you hear, did you hear what he just said? I'm swearing by myself, because there's nobody bigger to swear to. He said, I'm swearing by myself. I will fill thee with men as with caterpillars. What he's saying is, I'm going to feel, I'm going to send so many people against you. It's going to be like the locusts yeah. Yeah. coming at you. Yeah. You're going to see a major change and shift. In Christian TV. Instead of, <coughs> you know, just let's have an Amway service, Amway. you're going to see voices rise up that when they talk the whole waves, television waves are going to shake. It's going to come into houses, and the whole house is going to shake and be affected by it. And their consciences will be split. Just boom. Verse 15. <clears throat> He hath made the earth by his power. He has established the world by his wisdom. He has stretched out the heavens by his understanding. When he utters his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens. And he causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He maketh light, lightnings with rain. And bring forth wind out of its treasures. Now what does this mean, Pastor Tom? Well, I'll tell you exactly what it means. He's going to send wind. He's going to send lightning. He's going to send rain. Not in the natural, spiritually speaking. And vapors, the glory clouds. He's going to pull it all out. And he is going to release such a move of God and such a wave of glory and such an anointing of gifts that we will not be able to resist the fact that church has to change now. Yeah. It's going to be something else. It's going to be hard to deal with. And... I'm not going to get into it tonight because I'm out of uh, this, this part of this. I'm going to stop now. But I will say this to you. You have to begin to understand that, that <clears throat> I've been doing this for 45 years. And as an example, every once in a while in those 45 years, I would run into somebody that maybe has a demon problem. We'd have two or three of them. I'd cast them out, no big deal. Everybody goes, well, you're really something else, aren't you? I said, not really. I said, the Lord's something else. 
But I'd deal with it really fast, and they, they always thought that was cool. You know, but now, see, we're going to be running into people that have hundreds and hundreds of them, maybe thousands of them. But see, here's the thing about that. The Lord has showed me that we are going to have the, the grace and the gifts on us to where when, when I used to cast out one or two at one time like that, a hundred of them will come out one time. Because <laughs> we've been faithful that way. Hallelujah. There's going to be a penetration of darkness that's going to be amazing. And I'm not just talking about me. I'm talking about you, too. I'm talking about, you know, uh, amazing things. <coughs> it's not going to be like it used to be. Church is going to be more fun. Because church won't just be church. It'll be out there. When you walk into the quick trip... And the anointing of God comes all over you. And you realize, wow, I think the angels of God are here. What's going on, Lord? And the Lord says, you see that little gal over there, standing over there? She looks like she's been beat up in life. And she just, you know, looks, she just looks depressed. You go over there. Walk right over there and look at her. And just say, can I pray for you? Jesus loves you. Just say that to her. And you're going to go over there and do that. She's going to say, okay. You're going to put your hand on her shoulder. And the second you do, that anointing is going to fall right there and quick trip. <clears throat> and they're all going to trip quickly. <laughs> because I've had this happen to me for years, times and seasons. All of a sudden, I'd be in a secular job or I'd be out in somewhere at a restaurant or something. The anointing would come on me and I'd do wild stuff. You know, it's not normal to be in a restaurant and have a prayer line. Nobody bothered me about it. Nobody said anything. I had the authority there. I knew who I was. I told the guy who was in charge there, come on over here and help catch. He was like, I really don't understand. I said, just stand there behind them, and when they fall, catch them. Don't let them hit their heads. It's your responsibility. Okay. I've been in, me and my wife have seen how the spirit of joy came in a, in a restaurant in Santa Cruz, California, and everybody in that restaurant, including all the Satanists and the Wiccans and the, and the, and the religious people and the people doing the food and everything else, were drunk in the spirit in the restaurant. Had no, not, most of them have probably never been anywhere near a service like that. They didn't even know what was happening to them. But when the Spirit of God comes like that, it doesn't matter if you know or not. You know something's good happening, you can't figure it out in your mind, it doesn't make any sense, but it works. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this is going to be the way it is. Are you ready for that? That's my first one. Sunday you don't want to miss. Because I'll be a preaching like a dragon. I mean, I got the scriptures all ready to go here. And I see where we're going with this. And I see what God wants to do with this. Isn't that good tonight? Wow. I mean, it's right there in front of us. I'm going to pray. Father, we thank you for all these people that are listening to us. I know that this is kind of heavy stuff, but Lord, it's time to be heavy. And I pray that this anointing that's in the room right now will flow to every person. Flow to every person in here. And there. Let this, on this video, let this video go viral. Let people see this and, and, and Lord, just come into the room and change their lives. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And I thank you and give you praise, Father, for it in Jesus' name. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, now's the time to do it. Why haven't you already done it? You know to do it. Do it. Get it over with. Get in the kingdom of God. You'll be blessed. You'll be happy you did. If you need deliverance and you're in the area, give us a call. I'll sick Naomi on you. We'll send you down to her restaurant so she'll take a break. Wait just a second. Come out! You know, it's going to be great. Everybody's going, I don't think I want my pancakes no more after that. <laughs> and we're going to receive our, our offerings, our Wednesday night tithes and offerings. If you have a, um, a check to give or want to give, they'll, they'll uh, give you an uh, envelope for your giving. 
All of those that are out there in uh, video land, if you'd like to get involved, we have a link below. You can go over to our website, faithoflifefellowship.org. We got all kind of links. We're all linked up on the media and you can go over there and you can give that way or you can send a check to Faith Alive Fellowship Post Office Box 605, Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin, 54235. And yes, we're talking about the fish. How many here have ever eaten a sturgeon? I have not yet. I'd like to try it. Anybody here? You have. I, Paul has. I, I, I don't doubt Paul has. Yeah. I like, uh, is it good or no. not really? Well, I like pike. You know, Sister Linda, Linda Bora, she, uh, she catches a lot of pike and she gives them to us. And then Stella fixes me a nice pike. Ooh. Uh, yeah, well, I'll go somewhere where they're supposed to know what they're doing and <laughs> let them cook it, you know. I just never have had it. I just wondered. But, yeah, it's a fish. And, and uh, yeah, that's our community. <laughs> we, we live in Sturgeon Bay, so there you go. Hallelujah. Go ahead, guys. And I hope to see you guys Sunday, but if I don't, oh, uh, we'll see you soon, right? Next time you see me, when will it be? I don't know. It'll be sometime. If you know, unless I go home to be with Jesus, or the rapture happens, I should be back. I'm very excited though to what's what God is doing. Uh, 60, 66 years old, I got a lot of energy for this. You know, it's like I did those four things yesterday, and uh, I did sleep really, really deep and good. But my wife's, you know, when you do four sessions like this, it's like you work ten hours for an hour session. They say the ener energy release, you know, and I seem to do really good. So I'm going to be around a while. I think I might, I might live to about 97. And, and as, long, as long as I can think and as long as I can speak, I'm going to keep plugging away. There's nothing else to do. What are you going to do? Go fishing? Maybe a little of that's okay, right? So anyway... We love you guys. Thank you for joining us tonight. God bless you. You're dismissed.